Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously, here's the thing. We're not personnel. Yes, we are. I'm wearing a badge, damn it. That is uncertain. Hey, controller, where's that ranged bot? Unknown. Guess what? You can't see it? That's the Dark Ancient. Or he's already jumped into something else. You know how it is. Places to be, continents to devastate. He dives through the gap into the armory level bridge at full speed. Mission accomplished, everyone. We've taken down his power supply. Everyone? He's trying to frame us? How dumb do you think the controller is? We have determined that you are not authorized personnel. Oh, god damn it. You think you can repair this thing? Probably. I elder mountain hammer the power source. Draven will fix it later. I didn't think that's what you meant! But at that moment, one of the doors on the north side of the room starts opening. I'm not confident they're peaceful. <laughs> I'm confident they're not. Are those missile pods on their shoulders? Opening the door was something of an accomplishment for units with no proper hands, but they managed to apply enough force to slide the door up a little, and once started, the mechanism kicked in, a counterweight helping it to rise the rest of the way. Opening it with its PPCs? A huge battle mech just opened the door? Oh no, they're only large. Battle mech. He's not denying it. First, it launches a canister which bursts in a blinding flash. Draven and Mora, make a will save. What? Make an easy will save. Who's shooting me with a will save? Who's got two racks of SRMs and no thumbs? This guy. Draven saves while Mora, who also has a very solid will saves, is blinded by the glitter dust round. Then the second new golem targets Black and Liz with an incendiary round. But it didn't hit me with that. I'll take fairy sprinkles over that any day. Now, actually, that's probably the least effective. Yes, with fire resistance 30, it doesn't actually do enough to harm you guys. It's safe for half, but there's no point. Liz is weirded out. She's not used to being immune to a fiery maelstrom. Damn, Max. However, at the end of the new golem's turns, a ray from one laser designates Draven as a touch attack, giving him three Polaron charges. It's got a hard on for you. I'm not the one who smashed the thing! Black, the other one designates you for three charges. Though it almost missed your touch AC because of the plus five that your Ring of Sloth gives against the first touch attack in any battle. I sound lance this guy for 27. Try and finish him. That puts it well past bloodied. If it hits you, it'll probably die. Yeah. I'll fight for closer. Liz runs up and attacks the sphere. She does decent damage, but it's not quite enough. What did she use? Mountain hammer? Uh, actually, she didn't use anything. Hold on. Liz isn't that dumb, even if I am. With her not being played stupidly, she gets another 2d6 from mountain hammer, and is dead. Woo! So that was actually very useful of Liz. Next up, the sphere. Except it's dead. Blind and unable to target anything, Mora activates her amulet of the disc, floating up to the ceiling to avoid any hand-to-hand, -hand and hope the force disc could provide cover against any raised attacks. Angel full attacks one of the new golems. Two hits, total of 36. Some physical, some cold, some fire. Yep, he takes all your funky damage. Which one laser Draven? Uh, that one. That one must die. Hmm, decisions, decisions. I'm going to hit this guy with rallying strike. 27? Nope, that's a miss. Again? AC 29. That's pathetic. Even like a 7 would have been enough. Would have healed everyone in 30 feet for 20 hit points. One of the basic golems interposes itself to protect these obviously ranged ones. Next up is Draven, then the artillery golems. Artillery golems? You could fireball them. My wand of fireball is trash. I'm gonna scrap it. I orb the damaged one for 29, then back off around the corner. Shoot some dust at you once, then you're running? Just around the corner. I can pop back in next round. Well, Draven's broken line of sight, but at the start of its turn, the one that targeted Black fires its artillery beam. It hits you for 4d6, plus triggers your Polaron charges. So 14 plus 3 10 damage charges. Take 44, minus 5 from your armor's electrical resist. Does it get to attack too? Yep, that happened automatically. At the end of their turn, they designate someone with the ray. At the beginning of their turn, it hits you with the laser guided death laser. That seems a little redundant. You'd think so, but you'd be wrong. Forgot how damaging those charges are. You can use the rod to remove them. I'm gonna have to. Then it plants itself in place and launches three successive incendiary rounds, hitting this area. Wait, they're targeting me? Indirect fire, 15 foot radius? The question is if three rounds can penetrate your fire resist. The three attacks combined to count as a single attack for 12d6 fire damage, because I said so. But it's 100% fire damage, and they still have fire resistance 30. Ha! 31, b****! You take one damage! I'm offended. 
The other one also uses its full attack to triple incendiary, because that's their go-to anti-infantry move, but this time it fails to deal enough damage to overcome the mass resist spell. Then the artillery golems designate Black again and Liz, giving them each three new Polaron charges. Do can play that game. I cast Blistering Radiance right on top of myself. Most of them are shut down. They can't dodge anything. Yeah, the little guys are probably gonna die soon. No, they're pretty toast. Their minion evasion and stuff doesn't apply when they're disabled. How long is Mora blind for? Like, a minute. Oh, so she's out of the fight. She can heal herself. It's touch range. We can come to her. I'll use my ring to drop a wall right in front of Black. Laser that. They probably will. Liz was about to move to break line of sight, because she saw that laser went bad. But she's getting used to their weird powers now, so she moves up behind the wall of force, too. <sighs> should I zap myself with the wand to remove these charges? Or should I come out and shoot these guys? I don't know what their AI is. Will they stay focused on the wall? I have an idea. I think that breaking line of sight breaks their targeting. I still have the charges. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so that's the question. Does breaking line of sight break it. You want me to test it? For science! I was gonna say, does this happen every time? Sounds like a poor use of resources. If, if it blasts me, then we have to waste a bunch of spells healing me. Mora can't do anything but heal. Go for it. Come on. It's in the name of experimentation. Goddamn, don't talk to me that way, because now I'm really tempted. Seriously, because then we can compare whether a solid wall and a wall of force do the same thing. Because wall of force breaks line of effect, but they can still see it. All right, f*** it. Using the corner for cover as much as possible, I'll orb of force again. For science. You targeting the damaged one, or the one that hit you? Damaged, clearly. Revenge isn't really Draven's thing. Take 40. It's way past bloodied. And you'll be happy to know that you don't automatically get blasted. For 4d6 plus 30 damage. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. With both the currently designated targets behind it, the deadly beams harmlessly strike the wall of force instead. But a golem fires a full volley of glitter dust rounds to burst around the corner at Draven, who makes all three saves easily, while the other triple glitter dust the hero is sheltering behind the force wall. Suddenly, you guys are so incredibly sparkly that I'm giving you minus one to hit. You're dazzled. You're so sparkly, even more I can see you. The base difficulty of the will save isn't that hard, but save DCs of the artillery golem are increased by the number of charges on the target such that Black very nearly failed one of the rolls and Liz was blinded. The other golem tries to triple incendiary them, but is again unable to beat 30 resistance on 12d6. Draven, they zap you twice. You gain six charges. I have nine? Bloody hell! I'm off and wanding myself. The regular golem critically slashes Black for 38, who unleashes all his backlash effects, including the two use per day amulet and the ring, which only works on crits, dealing 47 damage back, such that the unit veritably explodes out the back after landing the blow. I need to heal now, but I'm in reach, and my concentration skill isn't good enough to make sure it works. I'd better kill this guy then. But Black falls just short of finishing the damaged artillery golem, so Angel drops from above and shreds what's left of it, causing the golem's death throws to release an incendiary volley harmlessly into the ceiling. Finally, Rallying Strike works, does the same damage as a normal attack, but everyone within 30 feet heals 20. This thing can't be allowed to go again, because I'll take 50 damage plus the 4d6, and I'm at 49. Black wasn't targeted this round. He still has the charges. Yeah, but they both targeted Draven this time. And I have to stay out of line of sight, because I'd take 100 damage. But if you do, it shouldn't be able to laser anything this round at all, as far as we know. Oh, that's right. Then Black should be okay. We think. Theoretically. So I should really use the rod to get rid of my nine charges. Hold on, Draven. Before you do anything, you realize your locate creature is giving you a different direction now. Where? The damaged magma sifter on the floor, the one that had skidded in before they got here to block the door from closing, jerks into action, half flying, half skidding back down the hall, looking to jump the low gnome height railing of the enclosed bridge. What? I thought that was destroyed! It was right there the whole time! That's why it showed us that direction! It's pretty beat up, and he had abandoned it when you first entered the room, so it was inert. Since you killed the fire suppression system, he's been playing dead in here, concealing any glow that would tip you off. It's acting at about the same time as Draven, and you get some kind of warning from the locate person, so you can take an action before it gets out of view. Okay, it's okay. Oh, but it's gonna dampen my spell again. But, but I have to try! Orb of Force? Yeah, he only takes ten. He does not like taking even 10. That means you're not wanting Black's charges. Yeah, but th this guy's drinking our treasure! 
Wasn't it like two minutes ago you were talking about how Draven isn't about revenge? Whatever. This guy. You know what we should do? We should give Liz the healing wand. Liz? I don't know if she'd want to do that. It's not very orky. I have five charges. If I take the beam hit, I'm going to be at minus one even before the rolling part. But he didn't target you this round because they both targeted Draven. It does not laser this round. On the other hand, this thing has the feat that allows it to make ranged attacks without provoking attacks of opportunity, which is important because their options are either move and fire once, or not move at all, not even a five foot step, and brace themselves to fire three times. It hits Black with a pair of glitter dust rounds, actually blinding him this time, thanks to the plus five save DC from the charges, then hit Little One with an immobilizer round, effectively a single target slow spell, but he's saved, and it actually misses Angel with the targeting laser due to the plus one AC from Haste. It's currently designating the ceiling. Despite being blind, the cleric still hits twice for 30 damage, and two hits allow him to trigger his rending gauntlets for another seven damage. This model, not having any damage reduction, is bloodied, and Angel and Little One finish it off in short order. Draven goes around quickly healing everyone who still has charges, but the Dark Ancient is moving slowly in the lower parts of the lava-filled atrium, so they don't want to even wait for those who are blind to recover. They want to head him off if he's going to the secondary armory, checking on the controller along the way. Force bars are down, but the solid wall of force is still up and the golems remain, trying to look menacing. Which they took to be a good sign. Whatever the Dark Ancient was up to, he hadn't taken the controller yet, and just to make sure, Draven blocked off the controller's hallway with a wall of stone spell as they continued on. The secondary armory door was closed, and according to Draven's locate creature, the enemy clearly was not in there. The Dark Ancient had stopped briefly, but suddenly it's moving again, and much faster. First one way, then it virtually reverses direction, all moving low in the atrium, well below you, possibly in the lava. It sounded like he was teleporting, but for what? If he's going down, he must be heading for the core. I don't know, but if there aren't any more bodies around him, we'll have to lock him down with the dimensional anchor so we can finish him. I have a dagger. I have a scroll. Whatever the case, he was moving pretty fast, but then stopped again, near the center of everything, but much lower down now, as they return to the huge heavy door of the core cylinder. I only got a 36 to open it. 36 will do it, since the controller isn't actively hosing you this time. The door opens up to reveal a big round room. Just an empty room, 40 foot diameter. Is Alpha in here? Nope, he's further down. Again, you only get a vector, so you can't really judge the distance, but he's definitely downward, and not straight down, like off in this direction. I thought this was the lowest part of the facility. It should be. This was the lowest walkway, and the only thing below this is the cylinder in front of you and the square pool of lava. Start searching around. Search everything. Searching. The controls are fairly well concealed, but Angel easily finds them. They don't seem like door controls. Out of the way. Yep, you're like, going down. It appears to be an elevator. What, this whole space? It's all an elevator, and it clearly doesn't go up. The floor of the room begins descending, and after about 30 feet, doors slide in place closing the shaft off at the top, but it keeps going down. Very poorly lit, with only the emergency lighting. I'll light up my base. Pretty soon, it becomes clear that you are lower than the surface of the lake of lava as you continue to descend the dark cylinder. Emergency power barely sustained. The entity has taken control of the strategic withdrawal unit. What is the strategic withdrawal unit? A unit designed to be used if the controller were in danger of being compromised for a strategic withdrawal. An escape pod? Essentially. How big is it? Sizable. My power level's extremely low. If only someone hadn't destroyed that power source. If necessary, units in the secondary armory are able to function independently from facility power. However, they're ill-equipped to combat the entity. Can he be stopped? Its goal is uncertain. However, strategic control unit has backup connections for some of my control circuits. Activating the portal. He's activating the portal? God damn it. What is this guy trying to do? Does the portal require power? Portal is constructed at the polar nexus, the greatest known confluence of volcanic ley lines. Once activated, it is self-sustaining. Let me guess, you can't shut it off from where you are. The unit's backup control circuits are duplicates of my own. Due to closer proximity, it will be able to overwhelm my commands. Okay, from now on, I won't break things. Oh yeah, can we put a countdown on that? Can you get us there faster? Alright, blast a hole in the elevator floor, we'll fly down. It's still going down. Yeah, but we can fly faster, just blast it open and let's go. I won't break things anymore. Ten. 
Nine. I mean, important eight, things. Seven. Break the floor. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I'll see if I can make it go faster. Mora will help. They do hotwire it, increasing the speed briefly, but they've already descended almost 300 feet. Any blindness has worn off. They've done all the healing and recast all their medium duration buffs, but at 330 feet below the starting point, automatic braking initiates, slowing it to a stop 350 feet below the last bridge, though the additional speed gives them a bit of a bump. As soon as they glimpse the room, though, they whip out the short duration buffs, like Mora's Haste and Black recasting Fell the Greatest Foe on Angel. 350 feet? How did he get down here so fast? He didn't use the elevator. Dimension door? The strategic withdrawal unit can be launched several directions from his hangar, to the atrium, down to the core, or up to the surface. The room is 50 feet high, 100 feet wide, and pretty damn long. That is a huge room. The walls of the massive chamber are just a ceiling-to-floor waterfall of lava. Oh, God. The flow is pretty smooth and controlled, and the splash zone is less than five feet. But the room seems to be heat-shielded, and the ground is not lava. That's the important thing. There's also a large, round, active portal with a small ramp up to it. Where is he? Your spell points you directly at the portal, though your keen deductive sense tells you that if he had been transported anywhere by a portal, the spell wouldn't point at the portal. It would stop working if out of range. There's room behind it? Yeah, it's like 30 feet high. So what happens if he doesn't stabilize it? Probably astral plague. We're okay right now, but if we don't contain it and it goes off, it'll probably fry all the Arctic. Poor penguins. The Arctic? You don't seem to understand. This is the polar nexus. The most powerful nexus the Atari has ever discovered. These ley lines travel all across the continent. It'll split the world in two? Unfortunately, it took so long to finally get down here that we've missed the volcanic maxima by a couple days. There should still be enough energy to radiate most of the continent. At least the northern half. Don't worry guys, he's monologuing. We've got this. He steps out from behind the portal, or rather, he straightens up. Oh, he's huge. Gargantuan. Its space is 4x4. Four four. I knew it would be a big f***ing mech. The strategic withdrawal unit, though not literally stitched together from regular golems, has many parts clearly based on the standard golem designs. For example, its left arm heavily resembles the weapon of a fire suppression system. It also has huge mecha wings. What happens if we dimensional anchor the portal? You want me to knowledge arcana? Your guess is the dagger's magic is too small to affect something of that size and power. If you could cobble together a dimensional anchor-like effect closer to that magnitude, you estimate about 30% it shuts down, 50% of some kind of dimensional catastrophe, and you're leaving 20% for the who the hell knows. Not bad odds. Around the shoulder area, a pair of hemispheres emerge and power up. Twin shield generators? I shoot him for 29. You do 29 damage to his shield's temporary hit points. I so wish I had Ballista Throw prepared to throw them in the lava. All you have to do is stand still and concentrate for five straight minutes, change out the maneuver, and then rejoin the fight. We're hasted. I'll searing charge him. I literally turn myself into a spear using the dagger as the tip. You realize he still has a good-sized temp HP shield. I don't care about the damage. I want to anchor him. Actually, flying with haste. Shit, I'm so fast, I don't even have to charge. That changes things. I'll disrupting strike him with the dagger. Anchor you and lose all your actions. Though, his will save is probably through the roof. Oh yeah, unless his AC is higher than 42, take 9 damage. Well, he saves against your strike. You deal 9 damage, but are still not through the shields, so he is not dimensional anchor. Deflected, the small blade is flung out of your hands, clattering to the stone floor. I'm not going to say it's used up, though, because that would be lame. If it didn't activate, then why does it fly away? I'm using it as a weapon. You just went full force into something that didn't give at all, and I don't know. Just seems cool. Okay, next time, I'll searing charge it into him. You did also learn that his shield will have to be down to dagger him. He should get an attack of opportunity, though. Swinging this blade that looks like several of those flatbed haulers stacked end to end, he deals 26 damage to you, plus two polar on charges. There are the charges. It's more smashing than chopping, really. Yeah, against something its own size, it would be a cutting weapon. It's a little sharpened, but against normal sized enemies, it's really just crushing. Also, as the blade clangs against the metal, you are pretty sure that thing can hit multiple squares at once. Okay, okay separate, separate guys. guys. Mora hits him with targeting rate, so everyone gets plus three to hit. For this round? For one round per level. Wow. I could make somebody's weapon count as that of Mantine, but we haven't actually got through yet to see if he has damage reduction. If he has DR and the temp HP, we'll never get through. I'm hoping we can target the shield generators. Can we, or are they treated as part of his body? You'll find out when you try. 
Graven doesn't find out, though. With a slew of terrible rolls, he can't score a single hit on a shielded, armored escape pod. Uh, ah! I should have just cast a spell. At least it always works. Liz's turn! Once again, Liz is not sure how to approach this situation. Give her the wand. Let her zap off the charges. This may not be a chargey fight. I got two charges when the sword hit. Have Liz deal with them. Okay, sure. I'm no healer. Liz seems quite unsure about the thing, but it's pretty much point and click, and she's going to take your advice because she's never fought in a room made of lava against a thing this size which isn't a scorpion. Liz moves up to get into the rod's 60-foot range. She's going to stay on the ground for now. She's aware she can fly. She's not too dumb to fly, but she's more comfortable on the ground, and plus, you showed it to spread out, and if everyone else is airborne, then staying low is spread out. The rod removes little one's charges, healing him a small amount. Come on, bring it, bring it. No, it's supposed to hit me. This body's really more beta style, but it does have some appeal. Didn't we fight beta? Didn't we kill beta? What's your name, Epsilon. Not Alpha? Well, we've just been calling him Alpha. Alpha was the first, but he didn't quite make it. We learned a lot. So we never met Alpha? We just assumed. We'd heard some Greek letters. He's going to whack you and move. Hits you for 23 and another two charges. Then you get an attack of opportunity. Ah, no. Then he puts his other hand on a portal and vaults over to here. Come on, he's that agile? I know he's got little wing thingies, but he's got wings. Then these two little things pop up and he hits you and Rainbow Dash with his targeting beam. You get eight charges. I could knight's move. No, wait. It's a teleport. I can't do it down here. You can try? You actually can do it down here. This is the portal area. Teleportation spells aren't hampered here. We have to dimensional anchor him then. Black Knight moves into flanking position, dealing 29 damage to his shields, which recharged at the start of Epsilon's turn. We need to take those generators down. How do we do that? People were positing the theory that when the shields are down, you might try and target the generators. Uh, another 28 damage? You have almost broken through the resistance. One more, damn it. Helm? No. But I ran for nine. I just kick it. Nine breaks through. It gets reduced a small amount by DR, but finishes off the shields and deals one damage to his body. Little one has Rainbow Dash moved to block line of sight between the golem and Draven. We're just gonna let her get hit? She has more hit points than I do. She can take one hit. There's nowhere she can hide anyway. But maybe you can hide behind her. And I tell Liz, if you don't use the rod on her, I'll shove that rod up your ass. Keep that horse alive. I'll use my amulet to make this a touch attack. And a hit. AC 27? It has a respectable touch AC. It does not have 27 touch. You rolled a 2! How do you get 27? Plus 17 a hit? Plus 2 bane? Plus 2 flanking? Plus 3 targeting rate? Plus 1 haste? Take 37 damage. It ignores the 2 points of fire. Okay. Then second attack, 33 damage. That actually destroys one of the shield generators. 31 damage. Ow. If you didn't have reach, I'd say you can't hit both of them, but you're good. Guess who just became target number one? Little one snatches the drop dagger while soaring past right up into a brutal sword attack, but he barrels onward, plunging the blade into the huge mecha head for seven damage. It does DR some of it, but not all. He takes two damage and is dimensional anchor. Mora uses her bard song to inspire greatness in Little One for 16 short duration hit points and plus two to hit. What? Give it to Angel. You're ripping the shit out of it. I still have heart seeker charges. I get plus one to hit and damage if I move within 30 feet, but then I'd be within 30 feet of that thing. Choosing to stay in cover rather than risk a point blank shot, Draven fires over top of the massive horse, missing his first shot by one. He still deals 15 and 19 damage, though each hit is reduced by 5 by his DR. <laughs> God damn it. The generator is still functioning. Barely. Ignoring the shot that missed, if just the plus one damage from point blank shot had bled into the other attacks. Do you want Liz to fly up and pop that pimple over there, or follow the previous orders and want Rainbow Dash? I'm worried it's gonna be a giant AoE unload. Yeah, you should heal Draven. Rainbow Dash can take a hit. I considered flying back into the elevator, so Liz hovers closer and uses the rod to remove all Draven's charges, though the healing itself is wasted on just one point of damage she has suffered. First thing on Epsilon's turn, the artillery beam goes off and hits Rainbow Dash for... Why does he hate Rainbow Dash? That's who had the charges. So she takes 98 damage. Oh, 
She has 53 hit points left. I would have been at two, and that's because of my plus four con amulet. She has 171 max HP. She's pretty tough. She's got to get out of there now, though. Though if he kills her, not only are we raising her, but I'm gonna his and <laughs> Epsilon's one remaining shield generator refreshes the shield back up to 30, and he blasts a cone of cold from Angel down to Draven and Rainbow Dash. 40 damage, reflex 18 for half. Does he get a bonus for cover? Uh, Draven can have plus two to his save versus Cone of Cold because he's hiding behind a giant Rainbow Dash. Plus two? That's not much. Better than nothing. 18. Wow, the plus two save did it. Cool. And I will remember, finally, to use my Ring of Mystic Defiance to prevent 10 spell damage. Everyone hit by the cone gains one charge, whether you save or not. Feel the wrath. Then he's going to spin around and hit both Little One and Black with one sword swipe. I'm opened up, by the way. Yeah, you're not trying to block it. You want him to hit you. You're just trying to get hit? He hasn't seen the power of Sirius. Okay, then he hits you. You each take 31 and 2 charges. Black's counter damage deals 22, virtually knocking out the remaining shields before Epsilon's turn is even over. Then, since you two are still clustered close together, he'll designate Draven and Rainbow Dash again. A 10-foot beam sweeps... It's hard for him to miss with a touch attack. And yet, he misses Draven. Okay, well, I roll the number of charges, and Rainbow Dash gets... 7. I saw that roll. That means we could actually get up to 10! For anyone questioning my sanity and fairness, I did know you would have the rod for this fight. Not only would you have the Reconstructor to partially counter the charges, but you fought the Artillery Golems first, so you'd understand the mechanic. I hit... hit... hit possible crit? Can I crit him? No. Aww. It'll be nice when we ever get to fight a fleshy creature. You guys should all buy items that let you crit against constructs, since you just fought like all the golems and there probably won't be any for a long time. Black is beating him down and kicks him right in the face. How does it feel to be weaker than Sirius? It's no surprise that you have to compare me to gods. Wait, let me rephrase that. Should I like wall of stone the portal? Jim said it's all staticky looking. It'd probably be a horrible thing to go through. Probably. If he even can while anchored. Rainbow Dash moves in and kicks for a hefty 17. Then Angel ravages it, taking full advantage of the targeting ray, Heartseeker amulet, and the gargantuan damage boost from the Fell the Greatest Foe. Is it bloodied? Yes. But as soon as it hits half health, two new shield generators emerge from its body and instantly refresh a new 60 hit point shield. Morna chips away at the shield while Liz rods Rainbow Dash, removing eight deadly charges and healing 28 damage in the process. Damn, Max. If he just refresh the shields out of turn, but he's going to act again soon to refresh them again. Or I got them down to half. Yeah, attacking will do nothing. I'm going to adamantine my weapon. That is plus five damage when his shields are down. If they're up, it does nothing. Right, but I'm one of the last to act, so the shields should always be down by my turn. Now he's going to artillery beam you, because you have four charges from being sorted, and you take 66 damage. Wow! How's your health? He's getting low. And I can't just five foot over and heal, because I'll still be in his reach. My concentration's not that good. He hasn't missed an attack yet, so it's not a good gamble that he'd miss an attack of opportunity. It is a sword the size of a flatbed truck, made of four smaller flatbed trucks. It will almost be a shame to kill you. You've made things so much easier. It's so annoying. He can't move, then Cone of Cold, then move. And he could if he wasn't Dimensional Anchor. You guys are spread out now, so he designates Angel for 9, giving her a total of 10 charges. Then he smashes Black and Little One for another 30 damage. Are you still standing? I immediate heal him, regardless. That's going to leave you standing either way. It depends how much he rolls. Ooh, it takes one less attack of opportunity if you go down. 2d4, no bonuses, you get 6. Well, of my 159 hit points, I've taken 158, and that's counting the 16 Mora gave me. Well, counting the short-term hit points? Yes, all his hit points are short-term right now. That's the problem. Yeah, pretty much. I'm actually at minus 15 in a few rounds when the bard power wears off. Epsilon moves, provoking a lot of attacks of opportunity, taking more than 20 damage each from the melee heroes, instantly shredding his shields, which just refreshed for the round, and already one of his new shield units is not looking very good. When I hit him, I heal two hit points from my stance. Three hit points! 
I'm on my way, guys. I'm on my way. Then he rockets right into the lava, right through the molten wall. I did not see that coming. I guess submersing him in lava wouldn't have worked that well. All right, heal up, everybody. Can you shut down the death gate? I'm going to try and shut down the portal. I'll help. Even if we break it and irradiate this place, that's a lot less bad than the alternative. It sounds like it could hit all of Vistria through the ley lines. If you need help breaking it, let me know. We'll see if I can deal with it first. I reach across and grab your shoulder, and I'm like, stand up, man. Black's heal spell restores a mass of 130 hit points. Liz rods away the 100 damage worth of charges on Angel, while she in turn brings her disabled device skill to join Draven's used magic device, trying to stop whatever Alpha was doing to the portal. I'm wondering if there's some way to taunt him, to prioritize me over you guys. I think I did the most damage to him. You could turn into stone form. Stone form? Holy shit, that's a good idea. Even as they start trying to open the hidden seams of the portal's panels, they can sense movement behind the lava falls, when a globe portents an artillery beam blast, detonating Black's four charges for a total of 59 damage. But Epsilon's hijacked mecha doesn't properly emerge from the lava, simply using his free actions, but using the strategic withdrawal unit's apparent immunity to magma to remain concealed for another round. Circuit-like pathways on the floor begin lighting up, a web of light drawn to the focal point of the portal. As lava flows become slightly more turbulent, sputtering drops of yellow-hot molten rock a little further than before. But even more unexpected, a number of fire elementals begin gliding out of the lava on both sides of the room, some flying, all pulsing with fire and with a slight tendency to move toward the heroes. I wonder if that's his doing or the containment failing, like those things that swarmed us in Ginneron. You could cast a wall of stone shaped to ramp lava straight onto the portal and destroy it. If we could break up the lava containment system and flood the whole room with lava, that could contain any explosion, I'd bet. I'd rather survive this, though, if possible. As Draven and Angel investigate the portal, they can tell the portal's controls are passively powered by the heat energy, but the portal itself is drawing the elemental energy of the volcanic leyline nexus and translating it into the astral power required for a sustained teleportation gate. I'm trying to cut the power off. If we shut down this gate, he'll come at us hard. We'll kill him then. You find a maintenance panel that you're able to access, but the problem you're running into is that this thing is huge. And now that you can see inside, it's built with a radial axis of symmetry. So you can access this node here, tear it up if you want, but there are many more around the ring. How many are we talking about? Lots, like a dozen. Uh, let's say a dozen. Twelve. Ugh. Now that's your first look. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way to take it down. And even if it is, you aren't sure how much redundancy there is. If you take out half these nodes, would it still be operational? And even if it is, would the loss of half of the nodes reduce the effect he's trying to create by half? I think I could reverse the polarity. No, I think maybe that's what he wants to do. To chart it up, then reverse the flow to send it back down to ley lines. Then how do we stop it if it's already getting charged? Well, how's he going to trigger it? The controller said this thing has a copy of his control circuits, so maybe if we could find the receiver for his instructions. While they investigate, tossing ideas back and forth, Rainbow Dash kicks one of the elementals dead, but in doing so, it expends its energy in a burst which attempts, and fails, to dispel her fire resistance buff, leaving behind a big chunk of igneous rock. If we all have the resist, just let the elemental beat on us, see what happens. The pulsing 1d6 fire damage around each of them, 5d6 cannot get through the buff Draven gave you all, even if they stack. Right, so do they even have an attack at all? That's what I mean. Don't attack them, don't kill them, who gives a shit? Just let them beat on us. That's an interesting take on it. If these things can dispel fire resistance, what happens if we throw one into the lava after him? Hit him with one? If it takes out his resistance, he'd have to get out of there. It kind of depends if his resistance is a spell or not. Yeah. I checked out stone form. It doesn't really give me any extra resistance to fire. Being stone doesn't protect against fire? That's stupid. It protects against some physical damage and a lot of weird stuff. Liz Rod's little one, removing the last two charges in the party, Black casts stone form anyway, and moves right up to the lava nearest where Draven's spell located the Dark Ancient. As I'm rushing over, you're doomed to fail, because my kin are not afraid to die. Speak for yourself. What can you do standing there? It would be really, really bad if, for example, he grabbed you and pulled you into the lava. Here's the thing. I, I don't understand the mechanism. But he's saying he's threatening to harm at least half the nation, at least half the humans out there. I have to do something. He has basically admitted his goal is genocide. 
Stone body doesn't help, but the party's 30 fire resist means the 5d6 damage zone is completely harmless. But stopping in the 10d6 zone right near the Cascade of Molten Rock is likely to do a little damage to him, and actually trying to enter the lava could hurt quite a bit. If he does pull me in, it's gonna be dramatic. That's the thing though. I'm saying he will fail because he has no courage. Humans survive through their children. Hey, who's to say I don't have any? He's pretty chaste. Now. Now? <laughs> I'll move up beside him, but in the 5d6 zone. I'm stowing my shield and extending my sphere to full length and I switch stance to Iron Guard Glare, then I ready my action for him coming out. Mora shoots down three of the Fire Elemental minions, the closest of which was more than ten feet away, out of his dispelling range. As some of them come in towards the heroes, Angel kills one with an opportunity attack before it can get in range of Draven and Liz, but his death burst does dispel Angel's fire resistance. Is Angel going to take fire damage just from being in the room? No, it appears the core room is constructed so that heat from the lava is being contained or siphoned off somehow, probably similar to how the bridges are protected. Another fire elemental sneaks in and self-destructs, taking out Draven's resistance as well, leaving behind another chunk of black rock. But then one comes right out of the lava falls, failing to purge the resistance from Little One, but rolling well enough to strip it from Black, who takes 42 fire damage from his proximity to lava. Yeah, you might want to back off from the lava now, or you're gonna live up to your name. Well, you guys standing right there is too tempting. You can obviously take your readied action as he pokes through the wall of molten rock. I'll rallying strike, take 27, and we heal 25 damage. You're at full health now, right? I'm at one damage. From one hit point to only one damage. Does he cleave? Technically no, but he has a sword that can hit four squares. First, anyone without 30 fire resistance takes nine more damage, radiating off the red-hot body of the gargantuan mech. Then he brings down the massive blade to crush Black and Little One. I'll use my shield block maneuver to add another plus four to your AC, and he has minus four to hit anyone next to me from my stance, so your effective AC would be, what, 41? That would make it miss. Oh, no. I put away my shield earlier. I can't use shield block without the actual shield. Aw. At AC 37, that's a hit then. You both take another 25 and two charges. Then he cones nearly everyone again with his prototype fire suppression cannon. Shouldn't we get attacks of opportunity? Or he has to cast defensively, if it's a spell. He's not actually spell casting though. His arm is based on the fire suppression system's cannons. Its cone of cold is a weapon for him, much like his sword. How much do we take? And by we, I mean them. It's one charge and 54 cold damage, safe for half. That was a hell of an 11d6 roll. I'm trying to work here. Then he's going to targeting beam. He can get up to two targets as long as they're no more than 10 feet apart. So he can hit Draven and Rainbow Dash again. Because of the threat of lava, I was working at the top of the portal. Okay, he'll just have to hit Liz and Angel then. I'm working near the top too. Oh, well then he'll target you and Draven. Damn it! They're actually still too far apart, working separately on the 30-foot diameter portal, so instead of zapping, just Draven for 9 charges. Liz is pretty hurt now, and many of them have lost their mass resist fire spell, including Black, who will take another 10d6 if he doesn't move out this turn. I should really move away from here, because my health is low, but my instinct is to attack, to go all out. We're hasted, we have Bane. Little One has attacked him since he re-emerged, and he can tell that Epsilon added some kind of AC buff while he was back there. You were pretty much auto-hitting him before, so you probably won't miss a lot now with your main attacks, but he is harder to hit now. Despite the danger, Black only 5 foots out, still placing him in the 5d6 damage zone, because if he moved any further, he couldn't full attack this turn. An attack he does, smashing through the last of Epsilon's shields for the round, and fully pulverizing one of the two fresh shield generators. Just one more. That we know of. One more, unless he has more secret ones to pop out. Gonna pop them out of his ass. Yes, he's gonna go full baboon on you. Rainbow Dash, who still has her fire resistance and flight buffs, charges across the room to kick the mech right in the shield dome for 24 damage. Mora hits two of three shots as well, despite the increased armor class, piling on more damage against the remaining shield generator, and then Little One begins shredding into it, full attacking, not even bothering with a searing blade boost against a lava immune golem currently radiating heat back at him. But with the shields down, he just laid into the strategic withdrawal unit, planting his spear deep in the second shield generator, and then starting to tear into the mech structure. As you're shredding it, you start to see black energy coming from some of the wounds. Right, we don't have to kill it, we just have to kill him! Forming an indistinct dark shape around the front, forming red eyes. Dimension door? No dimension door from him. 
He's trying to hang on, but he's too far gone. Now you die a cow. Take you with me. As the Dark Ancient dissipates, the golem starts glowing white as it propels itself back into the lava. Die. Uh, Liz, heal me. Liz removes your charges. The machine doesn't get any other action this turn, but as time's ticking down, the lava in this area starts glowing white. You're not sure what makes lava glow white, but it probably isn't heat. Though Black does take... Ow. 23 damage from your proximity to lava. Uh, whoever has knowledge of magic, try to help me get better timing, because I have one use left on my Ring of Force wall. I can cast actual Wall of Force. I like that web. Dispel magic! Uh, I only got 16. Doesn't have any effect. I can put up a pretty decent wall. I can cast a 30 foot wide Wall of Force all the way up to the ceiling. I put up my 10 foot wall too, just in case. Then I just hop inside the machine. And just for the hell of it, as the beam is fading, it collapses the force wall. As the blast dissipates, the lava still coming down starts to fall back into its intended path. Though you guys who are closer have to hop back from a dangerous splash of lava here. No, I'd put up my wall. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Out of combat now, the main danger has passed, but they still need to make sure that Epsilon's meddling with the portal does not come to fruition. Can the controller hear us down here? Yo, can you shut this down? I do not currently have sufficient power to shut down a portal. With physical access to the device, it may be possible to shut the power back into my storage circuits. Repower the facility? At least temporarily. The main power source is still down. Yeah, sorry about that. Just tell us how. They already figured out that reversing the power could send it back down the volcanic ley lines, where Alpha expected to create a harmonic reaction, transmitting the harmful astral energy under the sea all the way to Vistria and Korostrad, if not beyond. But the controller helped guide Angel, Mora, and Draven through the process of grounding some circuits and backing up others which are never intended to handle this amount of energy, and then funneling that power through the control architecture back into the facility's energy reserves. Sure, sure we do that. We do that. There aren't any more of those things, are there? The only strategic withdrawal unit has been destroyed. Can we break this thing? What, the portal? He's not the only one. Didn't the others have the same ambition? Shouldn't we shut this thing down more permanently? I'm not opposed to that, but I am opposed to breaking things. I thought we weren't going to. Unless you asked me to. What is it for? This portal was designed to be the keystone of a global instantaneous transportation system. Teleport circles. But then they all died off from the Astral Plague, that we still have. That was a side effect. That's why the project was cancelled at Ginron. The energy this thing runs on, can we use that in some way to recharge the seed that's protecting us? That is a brilliant damned idea. Maybe we can reconfigure the portal into a focused energy beam to recharge it. I was just thinking, wire it in, but okay. That all will have to wait for more research. As they head back up to the facility, they see groups of constructs leaving the secondary armory, the ones the controller said could function independent of Polaron's power, heading in the direction of the destroyed power source and repair facilities. And they practically stumble over the pair of workers who had been tasked to follow them earlier. I should name this little guy. I need a pet. You had one before. Seven. You might want to upgrade. These guys are the regular kind. They only function in or near Polaron. Those independent ones are way more expensive to produce. Have you seen the cost of the golems in the monster manual? So we can take these guys out of the facility? Those ones work anywhere. I just want to look at that crossbow. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you believe us now that we're on your side? Your badges were misappropriated. You are not authorized personnel. And you caused significant damage to Polaron units and equipment. However, some of that damage was in self-defense. Some? Oh, yeah. And you protected the world from a deadly misuse of the facility, which I was unable to prevent, and helped me regain control of the facility. Yes, I will designate you as authorized personnel. Is there any way we can convince her Angel Zataran? I don't want to lie to the controller. I don't think it will end well. Are we allowed to use the equipment in the secondary armory? For what purpose do you require access to that weaponry? We expect to have to travel to the Shadowfell soon. Zahir is being held there. Yes, we have to rescue Zaheer eventually. At some point, we're going to have to fight the Vampire Kings. We're going to have to fight the f***ing Vampire Kings. You're saying that aloud? Yeah, sure. Do it. Yes, I already did. Access, Access granted. granted. Displayed on the back wall are 100 Masterwork Silver Crossbow Bolts and 100 Masterwork Cold Iron Bolts. 
There are nine masterwork crossbows and a tenth one which is broken down with time. Four are medium sized, five small. But Draven immediately starts identifying the one levitating in the crystal cylinder. Though it was medium sized, it would automatically resize for a small or medium creature. It's called the Photon Accelerator. What, does it fire bolts of annihilation? It's a plus three Keen Undead Bane light crossbow. But Keen's an improved critical threat range. Crits don't work on undead. True but it's currently equipped with a greater true death weapon crystal. That's ghost touch plus 1d6 damage against undead and the ability to crit them. But that's a weapon crystal, so you could take that out and stick it in any weapon, if you want it. Who wielded this before? Itarn Van Helsing? Those are the main properties. It also has a flashlight, 120 foot cone of good illumination, can be turned on or off as a swift action, or you could turn on the brights, making all creatures in the cone dazzled for minus one to hit. Oh ho ho! The accelerator has a hidden five round chamber which holds up to five bolts, which could all be different types. The crossbow can be reloaded normally, but you can also load the crossbow with any specific bolt from the chamber as a free action. Thought activated. When wielding the crossbow, it also creates a 5 square by 5 square area centered on the wielder, wherein any gases or clouds are dissipated in one round, and creatures in the area have plus 4 to saves against the effects of gases and clouds. This effect can be deactivated or reactivated as a swift action. Can you make a sword like this? Who's gonna get this thing? Last thing is the daylight capacitors. It has these three glowing energy tubes. Three times per day, as a swift action, you can make a ranged touch attack. Range 100, if the hit target is undead, they take 3d6 damage, or 3d8 if they're sun sensitive undead. That's just a swift action, so you can do that and still attack or cast. Finally, once per day, it can just cast Searing Light. Caster level 10, obviously. As a swift action? No. Full Searing Light, still a standard action. You know, my math isn't that good, but this is worth over 100,000 gold. It's kind of an artifact. The other thing you notice, on the wall display, in addition to all those other bolts, there are five bolts displayed prominently in the middle, within Gnome's Arm's reach, with a plaque underneath written in a tart. Okay, let me get out my translation book. Oh man, we're gonna have to start another arc. Next time, on Tales from My D&D Campaign. I'm gonna shove my spear up his ass. I'm gonna shove this dagger of dimensional anchor up his ass. You're gonna impale 11 dimensions of ass. I have a dagger. Dimensional anchor. Ugh. Dimensional anchor dagger. I have a scroll. Dimensional anchor. Uh, dimensional anchor scroll. Dimensional anchor scroll. Dimensional anchor dagger. Ugh. Dimensional anchor dagger scroll.